As part of its biological monitoring program, the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency helps assess the health of Minnesota's surface waters by sampling and studying aquatic invertebrates. These include insect larvae, crayfish, snails, small clams, and leeches. The presence and numbers of different invertebrate species provide information on the condition of a given stream or river. Certain species are more sensitive to changes in water temperature and chemistry, stream flow, or sediments, while other species are more tolerant to changes in their environment. This makes invertebrates useful water quality indicators. Uh, invertebrates have tolerance values that are associated with them that um, for each individual invertebrate um, that indicate its sensitivity. to Conductivity is 248. Biologists have certain expectations for what range of species they should find at a given sampling location. If what they find differs too much from expectations, the location could be considered impaired. If we do find an impairment, we'll actually come back to the site within a year, um, try to resample it, and as I mentioned, try to, try to kind of hone in and figure out what, what's actually um, driving or what could potentially be causing the, the difference that we're seeing. In in the past, the MPCA relied heavily on chemical criteria as its monitoring tool to assess aquatic life and water quality. But over the years, the degradation of Minnesota's waters can be attributed to a wide range of sources that cannot be effectively monitored by measuring water chemistry alone. Um, biological information gives us more of a moving picture of what's going on within a system, whereas the chemical information is really good information um, but it's really just giving us a snapshot in time. And so using that information in concert with the biological information, we can really get a, a good perspective of what's going on within, within a particular stream ecosystem. At each sampling location, biologists collect at least 20 samples from a variety of habitats, like overhanging or submerged wood, aquatic plants, and rocky or sandy stream beds. Samples are sent to a lab where the invertebrates are identified and tallied. But it's giving us a good picture um, of where potential problem areas are and where potentially exceptional areas are. For more information on this and other monitoring efforts, visit the MPCA's website and search Biological Monitoring.